Come, let us gather in the presence of the Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is leading the way. And I do hope that you are staying safe in this heat as we slowly make our way through the month of August. Time is just flying, is it not? And I do hope you're having a fantastic day and not letting the distractions get ahead of you, you know, um, because life can do that. And we definitely don't want that to occur. So let's get started. Our morning scripture reading comes from Exodus 14, 13 through 14. Exodus 14, 13 through 14 reads as follows. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And sometimes we have to remember that, that the Lord will fight for us if we just can stand still for a moment to hear his word and to feel his presence. And someone out there right now needs to feel his presence. And we're going to pray for you. And of course, we have our website always in place, get-prayer.com. You can go there, get links to the podcast, as well as submit your own prayer request. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts that long for hope and renewal. Just as you delivered the Israelites from the hands of their oppressors, we ask that you deliver us from the challenges and struggles we face today and every day. Help us to stand firm in our faith knowing that you are fighting our battles and preparing a way forward, even when the path seems unclear. We trust in your promise to bring better days filled with your peace, joy, and provision. In the season of election, in the season of division of all sorts, by race, by gender, by culture, we actually look to strengthen our hope and help us rest in your presence, confident in your power, to bring us through to victory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so our topic today is following God's blueprints for the home. Following God's blueprints for the home. Did you realize there are blueprints God has designed for your home, for those who aspire to have families and to get married and have kids and all and, and do all the stuff and things that come along with that there is a blueprint god has designed for your home to make sure that he gets the glory for the great things he has done in your life your spouse's life as well as your children's life so if you're out there and you're looking to begin building a home with a young lady or young man and you're looking to have children this one's for you because you want to make sure you are following the blueprints. And our text comes from one, Psalm 127. Go ahead and turn to Psalm 127. Up on the screen right now, which reads, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from them, from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. Now, Lord, say what needs to be said, do what needs to be done for the uplift of your kingdom. Help us reach the families, reach those who are aspiring to have families, and may they understand the scriptures. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everyone remembers a time where you had to put something together. Everybody uh, enters the season sooner or later, whether it be for a birthday gift. But most of the time, most of the time, it's during Christmas. 
<laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. You get that bicycle. If you were a parent, you get that bicycle, you get that dollhouse. Uh, maybe it's a model car. Or it's some kind of toy that involves you putting it together and then putting batteries in it. And God forbid you forget the batteries. All right, so you get the package in the mail and you, you get it open from Amazon or wherever. And you open it up and you take all the parts and you put it on the table or on the floor and you're going through and making sure you're doing a proper audit and you're making sure all the bolts are there, all the A's, B's and C's are, are, that are labeled or as according to the instructions and you lay those all out and, and you know, and then you, and then you start putting it together. Okay. That's one person. That's one person. Look around in your house right now. Look around in your car. If you're listening, uh, look around, you know who that person is. That's doing this very detailed perspective and audit of, what came out the box before they put it together. All right, then there is the other person. The other person, they're gonna take everything out the box, do pretty much the same thing, and then they're gonna take that box, put it in front of them and say, okay, well, that's what it's supposed to look like. So let's get to work. Now they're not following the instructions. <laughs> Y'all y'all know who I'm talking about. I mean, they can eyeball that picture and put that thing right together ain't heard no instructions, ain't read no instructions. And yeah, so, so what? There might be a few pieces left over, but I'm sure it will be okay. Now I'm sure somewhere someone gasped at that thought. But we have these two different types of people. You got the ones that are gonna follow the instructions and you're gonna have the ones that won't follow the instructions thinking that they got it, they don't need the instructions. They see the picture, they, they know what they're doing. Just like those instructions, that come with the toys and other things, Jesus Christ has instructions on how to put your life together. In God's inspired word, we find the pathway of God for our lives through faith in Jesus Christ. Application of the scriptures and the awe of supernaturally witnessing God's masterwork around us. Now, if you're listening or if you're watching right now, regardless of your upbringing, you have either access or you have opportunity to get closer to God through Christ and to have this desire in your heart. Some have the access because they've given their lives to Jesus Christ. Okay. Some have the access. You have accepted Christ as Lord and savior. You have given your life over to Jesus Christ and you have this relationship. Some will have the opportunity. You come to church because you are on the pathway to understanding who Jesus Christ is and you're studying the scriptures along with other believers and prayerfully that's supposed to lead you to the throne, to, to the cross of Christ, to be saved, to enter into this relationship with him. Now, as we go about Psalm 127, it's a short five verse Psalm that packs a lot when it comes to understanding faith in God and foundation in his word and the Bible, a uh, constructive process on how God built his families. And in following God's blueprints for the home, Psalm 127 presents various elements we can learn to understand to apply regardless of where you are in the construction process. Let's look at the first thing. The first observation we're going to make here is understanding that God is the master architect and we're using his foundation and framework. Scripture says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. To understand a godly foundation, you must first accept the blueprints come from the Lord and not you. You are not in charge. You didn't draw the blueprints. Okay. It comes from Jesus Christ. He's the, the master architect, the master builder of your life. Just as a building requires a carefully crafted blueprint to ensure stability and provides direction and construction, its source of creation is from the architect. Without the plans, there is no direction. Without direction, there is no telling what type of structure you will get. Our lives must be built upon the plans and purposes God has designed for us. When we take our efforts and place them alongside his divine blueprint, every part of your life from our relationships to our ambitions finds true place and purpose. 
The problem with many people is they start building without the right blueprints and the family is starting to lean the wrong way. The marriage begins to show cracks in the foundation. Things begin to slowly go wrong and what looks like a strong home gets wiped out by Satan's tornado of sin and chaos, leaving nothing behind but the foundation of what used to be there. This is why Solomon says, unless the Lord builds the house and the builder, the builders labor in vain. In other words, if you're trying to build a home without the Lord, it will not achieve the desired goal and it will not have the desired result. And we all have desired goals and desired results when it comes to our marriages, when it comes to our homes. And what sadness does that bring when you as a father, as a mother, cannot see the desired goal and the desired result come to fruition in your lifetime? Oh, how sad that is. Our next observation is the installation of the divine security system. Now, every home has a security system. Maybe you've got that good old Louisville slugger sitting beside your door. That might be it, or you might have one of these fancy smancy security systems, brinks and all those things come to mind. But when you're following God's blueprints for the home, you, you want to add his security system as well. And that is the protection of God. His protection is the ultimate security system for our lives. No amount of human effort or vigilance can replace the security that comes from being under the watchful eye of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing comes close. Now we all have these doorbell cameras and all sorts of security systems. Some may even have a trigger attached to them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But I'm here to tell you this, if you don't have God, as the head of the household, you, my friend, will still have a blind spot. And you, and you have the worst type of blind spot ever. And that is you lack the guidance and the covering of Christ via the Holy Spirit. Letting you know something's wrong. You, you, la you lack the covering of the Lamb of God. And when you lack this spiritually, you are nothing more than easy pickings for Satan and his demons. When we have the Lord's protection, that lets the world around us know that someone is leading this home that's bigger than me, bigger than mama. It's the Lord. And when you bring someone in your house that's not of the Lord, oh, they can feel that thing. They can feel the Holy Spirit going through your house. They they can't sit right. They're looking around. They're nervous. You know, they, some of them come in with your kids. They, they come into your house and they're looking around and they always seem on edge and they always seem like they just can't get comfortable. Why? Because their intentions had intentions. And they know whatever they had planned, they can't do it there. Mm -mm. and they can't wait to leave now as a father my sons had these friends and yeah they left as quick as they came <laughs> but that's supposed that is that is that's what we're talking about when we come to the desired goal and the desired result the desired goal is for them to feel the presence of the lord jesus christ the desired result is either you're going to embrace that presence or as the scripture says in james 4 7 satan will flee and that's just what it is. Trusting in God's protection gives us the confidence to face life ahead on knowing that God himself guards what we hold dear. And again, without God, that desired goal of having a secure home physically and spiritually will indeed be out of reach. And then there's the rest in God's plan. God has a plan in you following the plan to have a rest break there. Some of you all are killing yourselves out there. It is, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous how hard you're working to get the desired outcome from your plans when if you had simply followed God's plan, you'd have some rest right now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm resting. I'm resting in God's plan because I'm proud to say I follow the instructions. To the best of my ability, I followed those instructions. And I pray that you do too as well. Scripture says this, 
In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. There is no rest in following. There, There is rest in following God's blueprint for the home. Nearly slipped up there. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. How is that? You are not doing this by yourself. And when you, you have given it over to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can rest because it's not all up to you. Some of y'all right now are out there trying to figure it out for yourselves. Some of you fathers out there, let's start with you guys. You're trying to figure this thing out by yourself when you don't have to figure it out by yourself. Let's go to those mothers. You're trying to figure out things by yourself when you don't have to figure things out by yourself. Jesus Christ has a plan for you to follow. Simply follow the plan. Because there is rest when you follow the plan. So many men and women I've come across seem emotionally and spiritually, I don't know, exhausted. With as aspiring for a life they feel that is so out of reach because of their upbringing, education, or access to resources. And now I ask when they come to me with these woes and these troubles, as I listen very intently, I only ask who's doing the heavy lifting here. Is it you or is it God? Because God has already done the heavy lifting. Because if you're the one doing all the work and you're not praying, you're not looking to the Lord for the answers, once again, here's that phrase, in vain. The desired outcome of all stress and struggle will only get you so much. And that often leads to exhaustion and burnout and then depression, then anger. However, when we trust in God's timing and provision, we can experience true rest, physically and spiritually. This rest is a gift, a reminder that God's plan is not just about achieving, but about living in the peace and contentment that he provides. In true Solomon form, because Solomon wrote this psalm, and you probably can see the, his writing style where he goes from one topic to another topic so quickly, <laughs> you know, it's, it's connected, but he connects the, the, uh, the, the thought of the work of God's house to the protection of the city, and then jumps right to the inside of the house of the kids. You know, it's, it's wisdom in a psalm, basically. But it, it cranks back to Proverbs 16, 9, which says, In their hearts human plan, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Which leads us to our third observation here. It's about also filling the home with heritage, launching a future with confidence. When you follow God's plan, you can fill the home with that heritage and you can launch the future of your generations with confidence. Scripture says, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Following God's blueprints for the home, you realize just how blessed you are to have children, period. I know there are many people out there that desire to have children that for whatever medical reason they cannot. And so when you are able to have children, it's a blessing. Now God has a plan for them as well. We don't want to leave them out. We don't want to forget them. Even though this message is mostly for those who do have children in the home and you have this nuclear family, God has a plan for you as well. And what I want you to do is, is I want you to keep praying. I want you to keep looking to God for revelation and seek the answers. Keep docking. God's got a plan for you. Let's continue. Children, they are the life of the house. They are the substance of a future hope for the evidence of God's unique ability seen before our very eyes. Every mother can remember that day they birthed their child. Every father can remember exactly what went on that day. I know I can. Complete chaos. My mind was in a blur. I wasn't even the one having a child. Every Christian knows that to have children in the home means you're also going to dedicate your life to this thing called parenting. Knowing that kid, those kids are not yours, but are the Lord's and going to do. And you're going to do whatever it takes to make sure they follow the narrow path and not the wide one, which leads to destruction. Why? They are God's heritage.
entrusted to us to shape and nurture. They are the building blocks of a legacy that will outlast us, carrying forward the values, the faith, the principles we instill in them from God's blueprint. When we get back to seeing children as a important component of God's greater plan for future generations, society will get better. And even those who do not follow the Lord through our children, they will ask each other, what must I do to be saved and know the Jesus Christ that you know? And that's the goal. And when we get to that point, you can launch a strong generation. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Parents play the role of this skilled archer. Young, vibrant, can pull that bow back. <laughs> Shaping their children like arrows that will one day be released into the world. But this involves three things. And these are three things that I really hope you take into consideration as you think about the freedoms you give your children. Guidance, discipline, preparation. Are you raising the kids or are they raising themselves? You can't give them the freedom to figure out if they're going to church or not, but don't give them the freedom to figure out if they're going to school or not or going to football practice, going to softball practice. The problem is with that is you're focusing on tangible results that you can see, that you feel will lead them towards a brighter future, scholarships, pro contract, whatever the case is. And when it comes to God's word, you really, you wanna be hands off because you really don't want that responsibility. Because maybe in your own life, you have not seen tangible results from the Lord. And so you don't make God a part, of, a part of your plan. And so you don't make it a part of your children's plan. And as a result, when they make their decisions, that's on you, brother, sister. It's not on the church. It's not on the pastor. That's on you. Maybe you were made to go to church. Who knows? Are you intentionally raising them to be used by Christ? Or are you just going to sit back and say, well, let them figure it out because, well, you were made to go to church and made to read your Bible and you, you didn't like that. So when you got older, you're going to do different and doing different probably by now has cost you. There are people out there right now suffering from not taking charge of the home and following God's blueprint and are paying for it. They're mad because the kid's not with them in church, probably because not e they're not even following Jesus because they know what they know now. They think they know so much more, and they're wrong. They know they're wrong. I would encourage you to steer clear of those feelings. Trust the Lord. We all got here differently, and I totally get that, but beyond what you went through, you know the Lord now. You know the Lord now. Set the pace. God will show you the way. Do it early. Not when you don't have the energy to keep up and when the kids are about to head off the military or college or a job. Now here you come. No, do life with your children. Do life early with them because children, when raised with the intentionality and care, become powerful instruments in God's kingdom, ready to fulfill their God-given purpose. And when, what are the advantages? Look at verse 5 again. Blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. Blessed you are. The children are ready to face a world that looks different from the time me and you were kids. It will look different for their kids, but they will be ready to respond when they are equipped with God's word, godly parents in a godly home. And as a result, you get a spiritually strong home. They will not be put to shame, scripture says, when they contend with their opponents in court. A family built on God's foundation stands strong against adversity. And nowadays, there's a lot of it. Social pressures to change who you are physically, to define love as the world defines it. 
Churches dealing with biblical illiteracy and only desiring entertainment and pats on the head without conviction, equipping, empowering, and educating. When where being the victim is trending and being victorious in Christ is just too hard or even weird. We're in a world where preachers are nothing more than motivational speakers, where people don't want to be held accountable. And if you do so, you're accused of judging them. And it's the only verse they know in the Bible, but they do not want to know the person who said, don't judge, lest ye be judged. They care not about knowing that person. They just quote the verse because it's, they think it's a Christian dog whistle. Maybe it's time for you to flip this house for Jesus Christ. Maybe you need to get everybody gathered in a room and you need to say, you know what? We haven't been living right for a long time. And I'm talking about these parents out here. This is what you need to do. Gather everybody that lives under your leadership and authority in that house and confess it and say, hey, we need to get right. We need to get ourselves together and, and we need to get back to God. Confess. <laughs> this is the part that y'all need to do. Confess you've led the family incorrectly. Confess the family is broken because of your lack of leadership by God. Just get it out in the open. Be vulnerable to this so that you can do some spiritual renovations with the Lord. Once you invite God into the house, changes and transformation can begin. It's like when you accept Christ as Lord and Savior, God is doing spiritual renovations in your body and in your mind. And when you invite Jesus Christ into the home, regardless of if, the, you know, if you finally got it, okay, if you found, it doesn't matter where you are in seasons when it comes to your home. Just invite the Lord Jesus Christ into the home and say, hey, we need spiritual renovations. We need to do like that TV show. We need to flip this house, tear it down to the framework spiritually. And let's put up, let's put up walls of salvation. Let's put down flooring of grace and mercy. And let's put, put in here lights of love. And when we do this, you have the home covered in the blood of Christ through the intervention of the Holy Spirit that's been given to you upon your acceptance of Christ as Lord and Savior. Because the time is now, you know it like I know it, it's time for you now to give your house over and give yourself over to Jesus Christ. Absolute surrender. And if you're out there and you need to understand more about this, contact us via the website that I gave you earlier in the show. Let us know through your prayer requests what we can do to pray for you and pray with you. And I know you can do it. You've got this. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Where has your own understanding got you thus far? Something to think about. So until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we will talk to you next week. You take care.